what we'd like to do is to develop functions as a series expansion of Hermit polynomials. Now, in order to do that, it would be very useful to have some sort of orthogonality relationship at our disposal. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video, trying to derive such an orthogonality relationship. Now, we will be proceeding in a very similar way as we did with the, the, the Bessel functions. And that is, we're going to write down two slightly different variants of the differential equation, of the Hermit differential equation. So the first thing we're going to write down is a equation that looks like that. So phi double prime minus x phi prime plus 2m phi equal to zero. And then we'll have something with psi. And the only difference is that rather than having an m, we're going to have an n here. So these are two equations, and we know for the first equation that the solution is the Hermit polynomial of order m, and for the second equation we have the Hermit polynomial of order n, right? Okay. So these are our two equations. What we're going to do is we're going to take the first equation, and we're going to multiply that by psi exponential minus x squared, and the second equation with minus phi exponential minus x squared. Now, the effect of these particular factors will become clear uh, later on, and it seems that these things fall out of the sky here. But again, there is a way to derive these factors by looking at the uh, differential equation, but we're not going to go into that now. Uh, so what I suggest you do is pause the video, do these multiplications and summations, and see what you end up with. So rather straightforward calculation here. So we have exponential minus x squared. And then we take a look at uh, these two terms when they get multiplied by the factors over there. So that's going to be phi double prime psi minus. Okay, so this is the, uh, the first contribution. And then let's have a look at the contribution from these two terms. So um, that's going to be minus 2x and then we have again our exponential exponential minus x squared and then we have phi prime psi minus psi prime phi okay and then finally let's take a look at the two third terms here so this is going to give us plus 2 exponential minus x squared and then we have m minus n and then we have a product of phi and psi. And of course, this thing is equal to zero. Now, why did we choose these particular factors over here? Well, it turns out that if you stare long and hard at these two terms here, that eventually, hopefully, you might realize that uh, they can be written as a total differential of a certain quantity. So pause the video and see if you can figure out what the antiderivative is of these two terms here. So it turns out that if you take the product of exponential minus x squared, so that's that guy, and you take the product with this contribution over here, so that's uh, the following, minus psi prime phi, and if you take the derivative with respect to x of that whole product here, that then you indeed recover uh, these two terms here. So we can quickly uh, do that. If we take the derivative of exponential minus x squared, we have the minus 2x popping up, and then we copy the, the second factor. And if we keep the first factor and take the derivative of the second factor, you can easily see that then the sort of like two of the terms will cancel and the only terms you end up with are these two terms. So these two terms combine to the derivative of that, uh, that product over here. So that's, that's very interesting to know. And then let's move that final uh, term here to the other side to give us two exponential minus x squared and minus m and then the product of phi psi. Okay. If we have an expression like this with a total derivative on the left-hand side, 
then obviously we start to feel the itch to take the integral of this whole expression here, right? So we're going to take the integral, let's take first the integral of the, the right-hand side. So that's going to give us two times n minus m, and then the integral exponential minus x squared phi psi dx. And what we're also going to do is we're going to take that integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then for the end result, we need to evaluate this thing between the bounds minus and plus infinity. So we have exponential minus x squared and then phi psi psi prime phi evaluated between minus infinity and plus infinity. Now these guys, the phi's and the psi's, we know that they're solutions to the Hermit's differential equations. So they're just uh, polynomials. And if you take the derivatives of them, they're also polynomials. So the thing between brackets here will be a polynomial. At infinity, it will go towards infinity, but it will never uh, win out from this exponential here. This exponential will be overpowering. Um, and therefore, if we evaluate this at either plus or minus infinity, this thing will pull this whole expression to zero. So what we have in the end is that the integral on the left-hand side is equal to zero. Now, if we assume that n and m are different numbers, then the only conclusion is that this integral over here is equal to zero. Now, what is the integral? It's an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of exponential minus x squared. And then if you resubstitute what is the phi's and the psi's were, these were the Hermit polynomials respectively of order n and m. So we have shown that this particular integral is equal to zero. Is this an orthogonality relationship? Can you say that this, for example, tells you that the scalar product between hm and hm is equal to zero? Well, you can do that if you define your scalar product in the following way. So let's say you have two functions. What is their scalar product? We define it as being the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the products of the two functions but multiply it with a certain weighting factor, which is exponential minus x squared. So again, scalar products, you can define them however you see fit. And if it's useful to define a scalar product in such a way, if you're working with Hermit polynomials, that's useful because then the following orthogonality relationships holds, hold. And uh, that's useful, as we will see later on, when we want to expand functions into a series expansion that contains uh, permit polynomials.